Now here's a template that I'm making for actually cutting my frets. Instead of drawing it out over and over and over on you know future guitars, I like building tools that maybe I can use more than once. I think this is version two of my drawing. Now the laser is etching in those parts. It's not actually cutting all the way through. I'm going to end up having to cut through with a saw, but it's enough that I can get an X-Acto blade in there and kind of get things started. The circles are there to help me find my center line when I attach it onto a piece of wood. I'm going to glue it onto a thicker piece of MDF just to help it prevent warping. Throw some weights on there, let it dry overnight, and then I'll cut it out with a trim bit. Now I'm on with an X-Acto blade, and I'm using a nice 90 degree angled square to get it started. There's probably faster ways to make these, but man, I really enjoy this process. I had a blast with this project. Again, there's many ways to build guitars. I had to kind of make it up based on the tools that I had available, or the tools that I literally had to build. Now I put a piece of tape on there so I don't go too deep and make the entire thing fall apart. And the saw that I'm using, I bought at my local KMS Tools, and it was one of the thinnest kerf saws I could find before moving on to buying those flush cutting saws, those cool like Japanese ones. I'd like to get one of those in the future. This is all still part of making a jig. It's not just gonna be tracing this onto a piece. This jig that I'm gonna be making is gonna be fitting in a custom miter box that I'm gonna be building. And it's gonna have little locator pins, or in this case, it's actually gonna be an old hacksaw blade as a locator. And you'll see how that works really soon. So here's the miter box that I'm currently building. I took some old shelving, chopped it up on a table saw, nailed it together at the bottom of that U-shape, and now I need to cut a slot for my saw to go into. Now to get my saw cut to be perfectly straight, I could just go real slow. But you'll see there's two pieces of wood there that I've kind of clamped in place and that's going to guide my saw straight down. Now there you can see I can't go any deeper. So I end up having to borrow a saw from a friend and that's a saw that I'll buy in the future. That's a nice flush cut saw, Japanese made. So what's happening here? There you see that fingerboard template that I created and I'm going to glue it straight down onto the piece of maple that I'm actually using for the fingerboard. This allows me to temporarily hold it together while, you know, I do something to it. A little bit of CA glue, a little bit of activator, and when you put them together, they'll harden within five seconds or so. This is my fret cutting box. This is going to be try number one. I created a template. This is at a 25 and a half scale. Extra wide at the moment, just so it keeps it nice and parallel to any other pieces that I glue to it. Uh, this is gonna end up being a Telecaster style neck. I've left a little bit at the bottom, plenty at the top, because I'm gonna be figuring that out as I go. But as long as I know my centers and centers, I'll be able to trace my taper template to it later. This miter box here, this was cut with a couple different tools to get it the right thickness. This has a kerf of that much here, 020 or 0.508 for that. That should work for most frets. I have an old hacksaw blade here that fits down in there. Right to the bottom. And it's up in an eighth of an inch or two and a half millimeters. These slots, they were cut to accommodate this. Now I can pop that in there, keep it lined up nice and 90 on this. I can go ahead and make my first fret cut. One thing I do wish I had was a longer fret saw, but we'll get to that. So at the moment, I'm just eyeballing the depth. I'm purposely not going down all the way because I can make them more as I go. But that allows me to get a nice straight line across. I'm not going full depth at the moment, since I haven't got my fret wire in the mail yet. 
I'm just getting it started because I very quickly go back and bring them down another millimeter or so as needed. After that's done to the whole board, taper it and then shape it to my desired radius. I'm going to be doing a radius of 10 for this specific fretboard. So with that initial cut, that's pretty nice and straight. Go ahead and do the rest of them. I really like the idea of not having to use math every time or having to, you know, put a template down on paper and trace it and stuff. So just speed it up a little bit. That's about it. I'll basically continue up the board and this template will get traced onto the back of there. I'm not going the full depth right now for the sake of this demo, just getting these slots in here to start. And that was, this piece was really just uh, an old hacksaw blade, comes in and out. So if I ever need to replace things or change the depth of that, I can just put a different blade in there. Maybe two to three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. So that is a very simple way to do repeatable frets. I added another piece here so that if I want to clamp it to the edge of a table or something, I can. Maybe I'll put a little sandpaper for grip underneath. I will probably invest in a longer saw. The width was right, it's sharp, but it's not quite long enough compared to the size of this miter box. I don't get a whole lot of throw here. This is my first one, so I know I will probably make more prototypes in the future. Here's a difference. I'd like to get one that's more like this. I've just borrowed this from a friend. It has the exact same width, or pretty darn close. So if I was to go ahead and measure, this is just reading off in inches, 018, 020, 02, not a massive difference. These would both work well for the type of frets that I'm going to be installing. I wouldn't want to go any bigger than that though. This one's actually a little bit sharper. Ha! Go back to this one. I'm going to get the depth of them exactly after, but there we go. Currently we have, that's going to be for the nut, so that'll be about an eighth of an inch to fit my uh, my bone nut for here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. And that is going to be for a twenty-five and a half inch scale length. So that one I slipped a little bit, but you know, I'll just add some glue when I do the fret. I love this cool piece of sapwood here. It gives it some nice figure. This top one here is for where my nut is gonna go. The nut's gonna be like an eighth inch wide piece of cattle bone or whatever. And it's probably gonna get chopped close to there. As it slopes down for the headstock, I'm gonna route out that little slot for my truss rod adjustment. And that, I just finished routing that today. Still gotta get that thing cut out. Yes, I'm so excited. Maybe I'll just leave it this wide and build like a 12 string guitar for my monkey hands.
good enough for some clips. 